okay guys this is an update that i want to bring to us this hour yes uh, the man you are seeing here is showare showare is not a new person in nigerian politics you know uh he tried to become president he contested many times and uh, he have not uh, you know smuggled himself into the power of nigeria political space but the reason why we are talking about him in this video is because of what he said in the interview that he granted to arise news and that's what we are seeing in this video but before then please like this video share comment tell me where you're watching it is very important if you have not subscribed to this platform this channel what are you waiting for just subscribe all right okay so he says something quite interesting about Igbo people and nigerian politics and the detention and the kidnapping of mazda and the reason why mazda Nakani is still where he is in dsl dungeon until this day of course he says something that all of us know that nigeria not nigerian in this case i'm talking about yeah, i want to say uh, Igbo politicians all right Igbo politicians, they are the one, you know, collaborating with the uh, enemies of Igbos to detain Mazen Makan and keep him in where he where he where, where he is today. Now, he said that Mazen Makan, you know, case and the only problem, the only reason why they kidnap him is because he want to, you know, break up from the country called Nigeria. <laughs> but uh, in this case, he he he, he did not he, he did not fought Mazen Namadekano. I like he did not uh, see he did not uh, blame he's not blaming him. But the problem is that he said the, the reason why everybody is you know uh, against him. I mean politicians and all that is because one he want to break up in the country. Two is because he's an Igbo. Okay, so if you listen to what he said, you will find out that what he's trying to say, in my own understanding, is that he had it been that there's another person that said or committed what Mazen Okan, you know, you know, uh, have committed in their own case, like in, in the accusation they're laying against him that he committed this and committed that, which they have not proven to him, to, he have, they have not proved to anybody that he actually committed those things they are lying, you know, that they are put, pushing on him. Of course, it's lie. They are lying and they are trying to find a way to keep him in dungeon. That's just a fact. So she already record the same thing, saying that the reason why they kept him, you know, they 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 they, they, they abandon him there is because he's an evil man. So the fault, the problem is because he's an evil man. Let me not waste much of your time in this video. I would like you to listen to what he said. Then tell me what to think on comment section. I'll be right back. Well, what you must know is that Namdi Karan is being held hostage on behalf of the famed unity of Nigeria. That's what it's all about. It's as simple as that. If you mention his name in certain circles, they don't want to hear it because they feel like he threatens the real estate called Nigeria. And his Igbo makes it worse because Nigeria's DNA hates the Igbo for attempting you know, in the 60s and, you know, towards the end of the 70s, to leave a country they said is no longer favorable to their existence. But I keep saying, and I will repeat here again, is there any Nigerian out there in their majority who has not mentally seceded from Nigeria? Not many. That's why people are living in droves. Each time you get on a plane leaving this country is full, each time it's coming back, probably full too, but it is those who are coming back to pack their things that are coming back. That's the way I describe mm. it. But the truth is that Namdi Kanu has been held hostage. He was abducted from Kenya, extraordinary rendition. The fact that he's, in his, he's kidnapped from Kenya could not be explained shows that any judicial pronouncement or processes after that is null and void. You cannot go and kidnap somebody and bring them before a court. And the courts have made it very clear, even up to the Supreme Court, that he did not jump bail. It was a military that went to his house to kill people, and then he escaped. And now you have brought him back, you ought to respect and restore his bail. That's what I told his lawyers. Why are you applying for bail again? Because the Supreme Court made all the pronouncements except releasing him, and I think mm. it was because they were afraid. And that's why I said he's his hostage to this country. And like you rightly said, there are other people who have made even more egregious pronouncements and fought and carried arms in this country. And you have not treated them the same way because they're not Namdekanu's, uh, you know, their name don't sound East. 
And I'm not here to fetish being able. But the reality is that they are not treated fairly. And Inam Dekano is part of the reason why that is clear to everybody. Right. And by the way, I must also reveal here that there are some Igbo elites who are behind this. You know, whenever there's a crime of conspiracy against freedom fighters, there are people inside and outside who are working together. Okay, this update for some of us that are not conversant with what is going on in the north, in the northern part of Nigeria, especially in the northeast and uh, northwest and all that. You know, all this Christian-dominated area in the north that are terrorism and terrorists are taking place, to, you know, ransacking the villages, taking them on hostage, taking them on for ransom and all that. So most of us have time to check and to read what happened there and what is going on there and all that. But if you have not, this lady is an Aosa woman, not a Fulani woman, and she has something to say. I just want us to listen to this so that you that are paving way for uh, Ruga and all that in the eastern part and sabotaging the effort of the African government in Israel to make sure that our land, our border are being protected, you will understand what other people that have done, what you are trying to do, their end and what they are today. Just listen. Quite well right. Some of us in the north, as I go back to talking in, in Hausa, some people, um, if you remember, if you are in the north 2015, before Bahari came to power the first time, 2015, something happened that year. Something happened across the north. People just discovered that especially Christians, they discovered that their houses are being marked. Their houses are being marked before election, before presidential election. Their houses are being marked. And some Christians, at least I know some that I used to call my husband to, to tell him the threat they are receiving, that um, uh, somebody is even, uh, about two, three weeks in the election, uh, somebody is telling them, that they only have three weeks to remain alive. They only have three weeks to remain alive. After three weeks, if they do not uh, declare Bahari the, we, uh, the winner of the election, they are dead people. All over the north, if you can remember very well, that was what happened. In fact, one of one of the one of the places one of the places of my relations, my close relations, my close uh, relative uh, sister. I will not mention the place. I will not mention the name for security purposes. She was telling me at that time, you know, their community. This is they have the Christian community and they have the other communities of people that are not Christians. And they were passing by and they, they saw there was a fight. There was a fight. Uh, some of these they, their neighbors came out of the mosque and there was so much fighting and they were the one the christians were the one separating the fight the quarrel and then one of them have to boss out to say let me even tell you the purpose for, for this first um, for this uh, fighting we are fighting today because we are having a meeting in this in this place because all your houses have been shared all your houses have been shared. We are just waiting for presidential election. If they declare good Lord Jonathan the winner, if they do not declare Buhari the winner, we are going to kill all of you. And when we finish killing all of you, we will share your houses. And so every house, the house of Malangwane belongs to this, uh, uh, Malangwane. The house of this person belongs to the, the house of Mr. Mr. Soso and so, it will belong to the, the, uh, Mr. Soso and so. And so, this man that is fighting, that is telling this, our brethren, he said because he, they, they, they look down at him, and in sharing of the house, they gave, they gave him, they assigned a house that is a mud house for him. The, uh, the house of so-so and so person, which is a mud house. So, they look at somebody like him, they now give him a mud house, and that is why he says, so all of them carry cement houses. And he is giving, giving a mud house. And because of that, he said he, must, he, he bust out, busted out and he leaked out the secret. That was what was happening all over northern Nigeria. So for that thing that God made uh, good Lord Jonathan to do, to, 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 to declare 
to, to call Buhari and congratulate him. It was not only God knows the number of souls that were saved, but in the midst of that, again, we are having over 7 million that have gone. You know. So this threat was not the first of its kind in northern Nigeria. It was not the first of its kind. It happened to our forefathers during the reign of um, Ahmad Bello Sardana of Sokoto. It happened to them. It happened to them. And for my, bio my biological mother, I used to put it this way. She, she says, you know, for many weeks, when, whenever every Sunday, as they are on their way going to church, these people, these uh, uh, Sardana people um, that have been uh, uh, terrorizing the region, tormenting them, as they are passing, uh, they are they are passing by to go to church, and they have to trek some miles to, to really get to church. Because in those days, it's not that the churches in Nigeria, in northern Nigeria, there are not much, and uh, missionaries uh, have done what they can. So on their way going, they, they trek miles to go to church and they will be sounding it in their ears. Remaining so, so and so weak. You have three weeks to live. You have two weeks to live. By next week, all of you either receive Danfordios religion or you are dead. That was the threat. And they will, go, they will go to church on Sunday. Everybody have, have arrived church with the same story of harassment on the way. And they will put it in prayer. They keep praying. They don't have anybody. They don't have any weapon. They don't have any defense. They don't even have the population to, 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 to face them. They don't even have the ability to face them. This is you are talking about the person that is in government and his people. Earlier than that time, what they were doing from market, market after market, as I say in my earlier videos, every market day, they will go that um, our parents tell us that when you see your husband coming back with a piece of uh, clothing material, you just know that he has accepted them for the earth religion. You just know that um, Sardona's, Amadi Bello Sardona's of Sokoto's people have visited the market that, that market day. That's how it has been all over northern Nigeria. Beside the people that are running away, beside the people that when or then it changed the pattern to enforcing it on people. And if you refuse to, any man that refuses to accept that religion, they will use um, a broken bottle to scrape his hair, scrape his head, and blood will be gushing all over the place. And people who are running away, people. People were leaving the main city to go to, to travel far away many days to 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 other places to, to settle, which those settlements have become town now. When you look at Kano, for instance, you look at the outskirts of Kano like within like Sumaila, like maybe thirty Enugu State House of Assembly passes public ranches management agency bill. So this bill is what they passed, you know, that allow Fulani people to start having their ranches in Enugu State. And uh, the Afghan government in Ezra Information Minister, Sonny Abarawa, you know, uh, reacted to this on his S handle. And he said, Aneke stressed that Hadas has come to stay, urging the people to learn to coexist with them. Now he said, Tell Oru Alepi Tamba, that is governor of any state that he's talking to, that the government government in Nigeria will destroy any Fulani Islamic jihadist terrorist he brings into old any state to buy their friends and not terrorizing on and no terrorist is allowed to coexist in the place because this is Biafran land. No matter how he runs harder to please his Fulani caliphate. He does not speak for Biafra. So, guys, what do you think about it? Because after listening to what I said, you know, uh, what we are just, uh, the video that just played out, played for us here, uh, what uh, this house our lady said, you understand that some of us and some of the, you know, so called political leaders, they, they are not following the news. They're not aware. Maybe they are aware, but because of their self interest, they don't want to do the needful to put a measure on how to secure the land and properties of their friends and 
in Igbo, Igbos, if you want to use the word, but the news is all about the well being of their friends. And so another one well meaningful Nigerians that want to remain in Nigeria, if you want to remain in Nigeria, you must not die to remain, you understand? So you, you should learn how to avoid anything that will possibly take your life and you not know, take your land. This is the end of the video that I want to bring to you. So I would like you to tell me what you think about all we have discussed so far. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it, and thank you so much. See you on my next one. Bye-bye for now, guys. Bye.